watch them later. Right. So I guess we'll live. Um, all right. So my name is Rex, and so I am running the Fire Talks this year. Uh, I just wanted to thank a few people for helping out this evening. We have Michael Smith, who's outdoor, making sure that we all have our badges and that we're not bringing in alcohol. Uh, and also we have Justin Monroe and Chris Wheeler, who are, are going to be taking notes and writing up a little blog post on all the different talks that are going on this evening. Uh, and then also, um, as you've seen, there's we have a lot of sponsors, um, so we're going to be mentioning them throughout the uh, the fire talks. Um, so first, what I wanted to do, or the first speaker is going to be David Relic Kennedy. Uh, and <laughs> talking about the social engineering toolkit, um, but I did want to give a big thanks out to Iron Geek, who is really, who is going to make sure that this is uh, filmed, so hopefully. That, so that, yeah, hopefully, so that we can watch it for years to come. So without further ado, the <laughs> Well, if you guys are just coming in and haven't been uh, attuned to the past uh, 20 minutes of rambling, uh, apparently when I was getting my site design, I, I'm notorious for having my presentations have typos and, and making uh, fun of me. So if you look, uh, yeah, life partner, yeah, yeah, life dot dot dot. Okay, anyways, uh, as you can see here, there's uh, the skulls can also be used as an E and A, but apparently it doesn't come out like that, so it looks like sack maniac. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was my social engineering talk. So I appreciate you guys. <laughs> no, uh, has anybody here used the social engineering toolkit? Good, a lot, a lot of good people out there. Um, a little bit about the social engineering toolkit. It's open source. Um, I'm also launching uh, setmaniac.com today, so you can actually go there right now, and it has a lot of uh, tutorials on the social engineering toolkit, as well as um, it's going to be a pretty much my central point for blogs. Uh, it's purely Python driven. And uh, really, it's a social engineering suite that you can use in a penetration test or uh, whatever you're doing from a social engineering perspective to kind of help you out a little bit. Good news is uh, version 4, 0.4 is getting released today. And actually, if you're running Backtrack 4 right now, you can update, and it'll be on there exclusively for the next uh, week or so. So if you do app get update, app get upgrade, and set 0.4 will be there exclusively. So a little history on the social engineering toolkit. Has everybody been to uh, social-engineer.org? Yeah. 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 The guy that runs it's over there. He's like, don't want to know him. So, uh, no, the social engineering, uh, social desk engineer org is a really good resource for a lot of social engineering uh, attacks. It's got the social engineering framework. Um, it's a really great resource if you're looking to get into social engineering, understand it. Uh, it's really, really complex. You know, you look at the technical aspects of security. Uh, you know, the buffer overflows and those type of things and, and very technical nature. Social engineering is exactly the same way. Looking at how people are programmed and how you can manipulate that and actually use that as your advantage is really a, a fine art. Uh, we did, uh, we designed, designed the framework, which is uh, the, the social engineering framework, and in there is pretty much your one-stop shop for all social engineering needs. It has everything in there that you can need from a, a social engineering attack. Does anybody here listen to the podcasts? Woo! Hey! Podcast for social engineers is great. It's PG, so your kids can listen to it most of the time. Uh, last, the last podcast I actually called from the hospital. I was getting an EKG done, and I had to hang up abruptly, but uh, it, was, it was a great podcast nonetheless. So, set 0.4, codename Pink Pirate, is, is a new release that's going on out there. <laughs> I guess it kind of goes... I, kind of go, I guess it kind of goes along with Sack Man, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to walk you through a little bit of a demo uh, for the Social Engineering Toolkit. And uh, as I'm going through, I'll explain it a little bit, but I'll go a little more in-depth afterwards. Does everybody know Backtrack? Yay! Yeah. What's that? <laughs> so first thing about Sack... <laughs> 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 All right, so 
Yeah. Roddy Crouchy, I man. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> After that Sad Man comment, it's all going downhill. <laughs> <laughs> No, first, first thing you know about set uh, is, is the config file that it has in it. In there, you have a lot of additional features. You can actually customize it quite a bit. We'll talk a little about that a little bit later. But the first thing you always want to do whenever you're going to launch an attack is get your customizations down uh, right. And there's just a bunch of different flags you can, you can add in here. One thing that we're going to do, and that is new in 0.4, is uh, if you turn the self sign on, it will actually allow you to create a dynamic Java applet with the specific site that you're cloning. So... If you're cloning Google, it'll actually uh, do a self sign certificate with Google now, which is new in 0.4. Another additional feature is as you're going through and performing the web attack, which you see here uh, in a little bit, you can actually start sending emails afterwards and get the emails out to them saying, hey, click this link, or however you guys want to do it. And there's a lot of different types of use for this type of attack that I'm about to show you here. And this is the, the Java Applet web attack. Um, you'll, you'll get a, a good feel for it here in a second. Uh, but really, regardless of how you get the person to that site is, is irrelevant. It's what, once that person actually, fin uh, actually clicks on that site, what happens then is the fun part. I mean, it can be through cross-site scripting or email phishing or those type of things, but you can set up a fake domain. Uh, our cache poisoning is also uh, in this as well. But if you're new to set, it's a menu-driven tool. So you just click on 2 for uh, the web attack, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to clone a site. And what the clone the site does is it'll clone any website you want to. So if you want to clone Google, in this instance, we're actually going to be cloning Slashdot. It'll take an exact replica of the site, automatically import it into a customized server that FastTrack has, and then automatically import the uh, Java applet attack into it for you. Set, not Set. That's it? Set, Set. Oh, sorry. Set. I get them confused. <laughs> One also thing to note as well is uh, in 0.4, I've also incorporated the Metasploit client-side attacks as well. So you can either use a Java applet attack, or you can use uh, Metasploit client-side attacks as well, the browser exploits. So here we're going to actually create our uh, fake certificate. So we're going we're to actually do a fake certificate of Slashdot. <coughs> and then it's going to ask us what site we want to clone, and we're going to clone Slashdot.org. Now here you have access to whatever payload you want to. If you want an interpreter, uh, it integrates completely with the Metasploit, so the payload selection is whatever you want to. So if you want to reverse TCP, a bind, whatever you want to, it's all available in there. Also supports encoding options. So if you want to use Shikata, which is one of the better ones, um, it'll automatically do that for you as well and encode it so you can get past antivirus, right? A listener port. And new in 0.4, which is what I'm really excited about, is the ability, the new Java applet is, is really cool. And I'll talk a little bit about that. The new Java applet that's in there, if you're familiar with set 0.3, it was very, very specific to uh, Windows. And it used, it used uh, Visual Basic script, uh, VB scripts to actually pull down the executable and run it. This time, there's no VB script involved. It's universal, so it supports Linux, OS X, and Windows. And as they browse to the site, it automatically target their browser based off of that. Um, in addition, it doesn't use any DB script or anything like that, so it's pretty much universal across all Windows boards. I've tested out XP, Vista, and Windows 7. And it doesn't have to be an elevated user, so if it's running as a low, uh, normal user account, not a problem. <coughs> so here's where it actually, you know where we configured in the set config to actually turn the email attack on? Here's where, if you want that uh, uh, function available to you, it'll actually integrate into Gmail, uh, you can do open relays if you have your own mail server. You can integrate with that with user credentials. Uh, what it also does is, if you know, Backtrack 4 uh, has SendMail on it by default. It will also integrate with send, uh, SendMail as well, so you can actually spoof the email attack uh, source, source address. So we're going to send an email to ihasecurity2009 at Gmail. We're going to integrate our own, my own user account into that. That's his real email, so just spam him a lot. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. So we're saying, hey, dude, check out this new Slashdot stu uh, stuff. And we're going to try to coax them into clicking on a new Slashdot site. So actually, while this is going on, uh, Set actually runs everything in the background. So the web server is already set up, the listener is already set up. So in case you send an email and the guy's trigger happy, he clicks on it. You know, it's already set up, ready to go. So here's the actual uh, victim machine, and this is uh, running Windows Vista. You see this new email that we have here. As soon as he clicks the link, it's going to load 